Okay, this is number 16, the standard of Ur. It is the third among the Sumerian pieces of our set uh, located in Mesopotamia region of the Middle East. There are two images associated with this piece. One is a peace side and one is a war side. So let's look here. Context, big picture, the Sumerians right here, Sumer, were comprised of multiple city-states. Here is the city-state of Ur. You might have heard references to this in the Bible. Abraham was from Ur. These city-states were competitive, and so there was inner fighting amongst them. There, there were invaders from the outside of Mesopotamia that invaded this region, and so a city-state right here would have to always be, often be at war with others. Another important context piece to know is right here is the um, Euphrates and Tigris River, and this is Mesopotamia. But you can also see that this is the center of the Eastern Hemisphere. In other words, it's the middle of the East. And as a result, this location allowed for a lot of trade among people from this region with folks in Africa, folks in India, uh, northern plains here in Europe. And so there are found in this location lots of, this. these are beads, for example, found in the same grave site as the Standard of Ur. But on the Standard of Ur, we have, I'm going to go back to it, we have made of wood but inlaid with shell, which would be from the seacoast, and then lapis lazuli, a blue rock. You're in my video there, Joan. Lapis lazuli from east of the city of Ur and red limestone from the India region. So, lots of competition and lots of trade. More context, kind of getting, narrowing down a little bit. This piece was found in a tomb, a royal tomb, and this is a recreation of what the tomb would have looked like kind of the moment before it was closed in. There were this many people and animals sacrificed in the tomb that this standard of Ur came from. So lots of wealth associated with this piece. We're not sure how these people died, whether they were killed with something, you know, a blunt implement before death. That's shown on some skeletons. Others look like they had a cup near them, like maybe they drank some poison. At any rate, in this royal tomb, there is a lot of wealth. And this is another artifact that was found in the tomb next to the standard of Ur. This is the golden head of a bull that was actually on a musical instrument, a lyre. Form. This is our piece in the museum in Britain, in London. The excavation of the tomb was funded by the British Museum and by the University of Pittsburgh, actually done in 1925-26. So that's why this piece is found at the British Museum. But you can see a woman here looking at it, so you kind of get the feel for the size. It's bigger than a shoebox by a little bit. The function, oh, and it's hollow. So made of wood inside is hollow and the, um, form here is that we have obvious registers. So think back to the beaker with the ibex motif where there's uh, different divisions to tell a story. Okay, uh, function. This initially was thought by the archaeologist who uncovered it, to uh, Woolley is his name, to be a standard like um, like it would sit on a pole and in war people would know hey there's my team i'm going to rush to my team but recently thoughts have been more that it's probably a music box because it's hollow 
and neither of those is completely confirmed. These are guesses based on other information archaeologists have. So, all right, content. The content on this side, the P side, is that we have the story of offerings to a king. And this is done in hierarchical scale. I circled the king here in red. You can see he's sitting in a special chair. In fact, one of the legs of the chair is actually like an animal leg. And looking at the bottom register, we just see people bringing things to the king. This is fish, for example. Don't know what this is, but this is another fish. They are bringing animals here in this case, and they're bringing them up to people who are sitting in chairs. Now, obviously, the people sitting in chairs are of a higher rank in society. This is what we mean by hierarchical scale. Uh, their bodies are bigger than the bodies of the people who are bringing goods, and they therefore these bigger people are kind of more important. We have someone over here who's playing a, an instrument like a harp, and that's the peace side. Stuff being brought to the king. On the war side, we have the story of war. And you can see here chariots, people getting crushed under them. The chariots are going, starting off slow, and then they're running. And then the second register, we have these soldiers who are dressed with arms. They have um, weapons in their hands, but they are bringing with them captives from war. Captives who are, in this case, he is naked, and they're being, being brought to the king. You can tell that this is still hierarchical scale. The king is so tall that his head goes abo above this kind of the top of the register. And this is likely the presentation here of these two guys who probably were the leaders of the captors. So this is the enemy king probably being brought before him. We think that because he's got more um, clothing that is adorned and um, he's kind of the first one being shown here, being offered to the king. Okay, a close up here of this content. Here, this was the bottom register, and you can see the horse, and here is a person that is falling underneath the horse. Then, this is a captured enemy soldier, and the wavy lines indicate wounds on that soldier. His hands are tied. And then again, this is a close up of the king don't know if this rope goes around the king's neck because it's a little bit destroyed here but that is a more close-up of the king this also is a close-up showing you the red limestone red rock and this is a close-up showing you the blue lapis lazuli now it's also pushed into uh what's called bitumen it's like tar and so that's what's holding this whole piece together. That's kind of the background behind these guys is black. That's the bitumen. All right. That's the standard of Ur from the Sumerians.